am you lot! I'm nobody's bitch! You! Mine. I don't need to know you. You only need to know me. I will be the one! Saw that right? <laughs> Anyways, I clicked on the wrong one. My bad. No, you didn't. You didn't see shit.
Here we go, and hello, welcome, welcome all, Friday night, Friday night, here we go, oh, show us your anime hair, this is the quick draw, quick draw on the hair tonight, I'm gonna get a chance to say hello to everyone, Alibug, <laughs> seriously, seriously, congrats, Dirk, you are first once again, or you haven't been first in a while, but you're first tonight. You are the one. Derek is the one. Derek is Jet Lee tonight. Congrats. Congrats, Derek. We're proud. Have been first a while. Excuse me? <laughs> Derek was first yesterday. Was he? Was he? <laughs> Oops. Really? Yesterday was like 10 years ago, guys. I can't remember nothing. I never not been first. Oh no, Ally Ally Bug's been uh s slamming the uh, first button for a while. Well, the last few streams at least I think, except last night, right? I don't see evidence of this. <laughs> uh, before I get carried away, I will do the anime hair, but I do want to say hello to everybody. She's a bot designed by Dirk. Lazy, Derek, hello to you. Alley Bug, of course, hello. Sweet Bug, sweet, sweet Bug. We have Fun Canny. I saw Fun Canny in the house. I saw the house. How you doing, Canny? I saw who I spy with my four eyes. Audie, but Audie's lurking, but Audie hit me with the bits as well. So thank you very much, Audie. If you see this in the VOD, or I can just. Uh, Give you another big thank you uh, on Discord or something, but thank you very much. Hope to see you again tonight. If not, uh, have yourself a, a good night, sweet dreams. And I think that's about it. Stream elements, hello. Always, you're always my my greatest friend. What? Why is? How is stream elements saying alley bug? What's going on here? Oh no! <laughs> Did Derek hack my stream? <laughs> Derek's hacking! Stop hacking, Derek! You cannot be stream elements. Stream elements is stream elements. Oh, some trick that Lily taught you? This I must find out more about. This I must, I must find out more. Someone's snitching. Oh my god, I missed a bit in chat, didn't I? Dirk is the stream. I'm late hacksaw. Well, you know, if anyone, if I trust anyone to have complete control over my stream elements, it, it's you, Derek. There's no follow age, as far as I know. Maybe Dirk can change that. You can make commands for everyone. Nice. <laughs> I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Uh, well. Almost every day. Okay, Ellie Bug. Uh, strap yourself in. I got nice crispy hair again, so I don't know how anime the hair can be tonight, but I'll try. Gloom Shadows! Welcome in. Happy Friday. It's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. Command add fall age. You've been following a long time. Oh, look at that! This must be is this does this come with mod powers only must be must be two minutes <laughs> Wait a minute just in time for the hair goodness. Yes, gloom shadows your timing is impeccable. I have to say It's almost like a sixth sense now Yes, alibug I've postponed long enough Like I said the hair is crispy so really, it's just gonna be more the same. It's gonna look like I stuck my finger in the wall outlet. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's not, it's just not pliable. It's just not long enough. Yep, I stuck the finger into the wall outlet again. The wall socket. Balancing a bit. Trying to give you your 1,000 points worth, Alibug. <laughs> well, balance. Maybe he's born with it. 
Magnificent Harold. Thank you, Gloom Shadows. Uh, coming from someone who has very long, uh, very very nice hair, colorful hair, I might add as well. Uh, no, it's, a, it's a big compliment. Oh, hey, buddy. Guess who uh, just barged into the room again? I have really got to get that uh, dog camera set up. It's uh, three months into uh, 2023 now. I still haven't done my dog camera. I think I just need to suck it up and just buy a cheapy uh, little stand and just uh, uh, attach my uh, smartphone to it. And then I have an app to just feed the uh, video, video feed over to the uh, smartphone or the other way around, take the smartphone feed put into OBS. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's Ma Macaline. Macaline. And chat is lively tonight. Thank you so much for uh, all being here. It's very nice to just settle into the stream. First thing uh, you see is just a bunch of familiar faces, good friends, chatting it up, waiting for the show to start. Uh, let me get my headphones back on. Wet fart. I hope you guys are hearing the redeems. I have my headphones off, so I, I only see the uh, visual. So I hope you guys are getting the sound effects. Oh, it was fanciful wordplay. My apologies, lazy. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, I see what we were doing there. It's okay, Dirk. Your heart was in the right place. We here. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. That was a wet fart. <laughs> I did have to go back in because soundalerts.com, I, I think I mentioned this last week, they 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 updated their TOS or whatever, and then they just scrubbed out every single alert that I'd set up, which was like all six of them. Not, not, a, not a big deal, but that explains why for a couple streams, there are no farts at all. No audible farts. It's all silent, silent killers. With this, unlike Ali's fascism, whoa, what? <laughs> Out comes the chickadee, the murderous chickadee. Oh, yeah, I'm back now. Yeah, I, I was just mentioning, um, nice coming in to the chat to such a warm reception. Um, I've been rocking the uh, starting soon screen for pretty much as long as I've been streaming. So I just want to ask you guys, like, do you, do you enjoy um, coming in early to the stream and you just have this starting soon screen, you have the music and then you can chat a bit. You might see me in chat for a couple seconds and then five to 10 minutes later, the stream will actually start. Like, do you guys like that format of live stream? I know everyone does a little differently. Some people just start their stream cold, like boom, they're on camera and they start talking. And um, yeah, I love it. Cool, cool, Derek. Yeah, I noticed that with you, Derek, you have your own, you have a blend almost where it's like, you are, you are on camera, but the stream is not officially starting until you say it starts, right? So you're just, you got the music in the background. You're you're sort of still fiddling with things, and then you're just waiting for people to trickle in. And uh, sometimes, yeah, you'll have like the game in the background on like the splash screen or something. That that's really cool too, because that's essentially a warm up. But you are there to welcome people as they come in, which is really cool. You have yeah, and you're basically starting 15 minutes before you actually get into the game. So that, that works really well for you. I like that a lot. Uh, and as I said again, some people just start cold. Um, no, no starting soon screen, no nothing. So yeah, I got I got one one positive vote from, from Dirk. Thank you very much. Cold starts are scary to me. Like I haven't even got my pants on. I know that feeling. It's like every day when I go to work. I got options now. Since I'm not playing game, I can look at the iPad or I can look at OBS for chats. It's nice. 
Lazy's talking about Lazy's still razzing Alibug about being a fascist, a CCP assassin, Chicken Communist Party. <laughs> uh, so, I also hope you guys don't mind. Like, I want to have some kind of visual thing. Because normally I have the thumbnail of the game that I'm going to be playing below. Um, but since I'm not playing game, I got nothing there. I usually have a, a pure pitch black darkness. Now I have a girl's tattooed ass. But at least the girl's holding uh, some sweet katanas. This is uh, a YouTube channel I found recently. I even posted it maybe in the music channel of the Discord. It's... It's this one channel that's dedicated to posting, um, like, techno, like, hour-long, two-hour-long techno mixes, and they always have this sort of, like, static background. So you have something to look at. I don't know where they get this art, but the art is always, like, this kind of cyberpunk aesthetic to it, and it's really cool. It's always, you know, it's always some chick, like a cyber chick or some assassin lady scantily clad um but the uh the sets that they actually post are pretty good i'm not usually into the straight up techno techno stuff but this is pretty good stuff i just have it on mute so i don't get uh uh whatever twitch's version of the copyright strike is and uh, i have the the royalty free spotify instead oh i thought that was a game <laughs> yeah it's a game called sin's edge coming soon it came out the exact same day as, uh, 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 what's that? <laughs> Rocket City. <laughs> Crime boss, Rocket City. <laughs> what type of music do you know we listen to, Mac? Uh, Gloom Shadows, I have, I'd like to think I have pretty eclectic, uh, tastes. We actually have this tradition at my, uh, work where, um, one of the teams, uh, one of the guys would just organize a playlist where he just asks people to submit um, a song from YouTube um, and he put it into a Google form and then he will shuffle them all up and then he'll post a, a playlist on Fridays where we all get to listen and we, we all try to guess who picked what, so what song, right? So I've been um, contributing to this list since like November or December of last year and uh, I always enjoy being one of the last people to be guessed because you cannot pin down any one type of genre of music to me. And it's a really fun thing. Other people are just very easy to guess because they always have a particular style of music that they that they lock onto. So I've just gone everywhere um, with, with those playlists. So I used to be a, a huge um, indie rock snob in, in a sense. So, you know, when I was in high school, I listened to the Pixies and uh, that indie rock sort of snobbery continued on into college. I co-hosted a, a college radio show with, with a good buddy of mine for a few years uh, during university and then we just play a lot of indie rock stuff. Like stuff like Pavement. I don't know if you guys know Pavement. It's kind of grungy. What was the name of the radio show? Oh. The, the one I did with my friend for the longest span of time was called Five Hour Lunch. <laughs> Five Hour Lunch, and then we eventually broke off and did our own separate shows because our, I guess our musical tastes start to uh, diverge a bit. And so he, uh, my friend went off to do his own thing. I forgot the name of my friend's show, but the, the, the show I did on my own became Audio Sprocket, kind of generic. And then at the same time, I also hosted my own uh, like twice a month uh, music, uh, not music review, movie review show. I did like an entertainment show because I was the entertainment coordinator at the radio station for a couple of years as well. So I would get, it was just a way for me to get free uh, movie passes all the time. But the, the in exchange, I had to record uh, reviews once in a while. Um, which I would record on these, uh, they're like eight tracks. I, they weren't exactly eight tracks, but they're pretty close. I think they called them carts. Yeah, super, super analogs, <laughs> super not fancy shit. 
This was still in like the mid 90s, guys. So that dates me a little bit. Um, I'm actually gonna see if instead of looking at this girl's ass, I I, I kind of like this one, but maybe something a little less in your face. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up. Just give me a moment here. Because I they have so many different like wallpapers, uh, depending on like which uh, techno set you're listening to on their channel. So give me give me a quick second, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk about I'll be I'll be right back. It's gonna be focused. It's gonna hide it for a sec, and then we'll do a little switcheroo. Uh, Gloom Shadows. I want to just uh, ask and ask you in return what what music are you into? I actually haven't talked about all my musical interests but i don't want to go on for like two hours um but uh what sort of music do you like to uh to jam out to or just chill out to it's all naked butts not that i'm complaining too much but <laughs> Yeah, where did they get this art? It, it's pretty sweet. Oh, this one's this one's bad. Uh, no, I won't do that one. Huh, this one this one's kind of interesting. I'm just talking to myself right now. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Went from ass to under boob. Oh man. Argento Wolf. Hello. A woo, a woo. And mine's all over the place. I do like electronic soundtracks, video games and movies, and depressing indie. A woo. Good stuff, Gloom Shadows. I think you might have liked my radio show back in the day. Um, yeah, I, I after college, I got into my uh, raving phase. So I got big into electronic music. Um... So you had like the Paul Oakenfold era, right? When he was huge, 20 plus years ago. Uh, that rude sandstorm, <laughs> that, that sort of shit. But then uh, from there, I branched off into really digging um, breaks, like really liking breaks. Like I would go to rave parties and then I'd find myself wandering into the side rooms and uh, I'd be like, what? what is this? I mean, I like the music that's going on in the main, on the main stage, but what the hell is this shit, right? You, the rooms are smaller, darker, smokier, and uh, the vibe was just so different. And you'd have like the best dancers in those rooms too, the uh, rooms that are like pumping the break beats. It was, yeah, good times, good times. And then, um, what else? Yeah, uh, you know, movie soundtracks, game soundtracks, uh, classical music. Everything, everything. Like, as I've gotten older, I kind of do find that I'm I'm okay with listening to stuff that I, I consider to be, like, wimpy and soft. Mac was a wild man. Argenda Wolf, how are you doing tonight? Uh, thanks for joining us. We're just shooting the shit tonight. There's no gaming usually on the last Friday of uh, of the month, or it's it's been a, a relatively new thing. I act like it's always been like this, but it's relatively a new thing for me. Just doing a just chatting stream at the end of the month. Lol, did we just replace Sword Case or Dommy Booby? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I had to I had to make a quick decision, right? I don't want to uh, leave you guys hanging for too long. So I was just like, okay, quick, quick, quick. Every single thumbnail I saw had something salacious to it. So I just made I just made a call. I just made a call. You have to do that. You have to do that sometimes. The, the worst thing you can do in a lot of cases is nothing at all in action. It's, it's, you have to take action. You have to, you have to do, pick a direction and just go. Before you do it, just have a rationale. It's like, I'm picking this because of this. And this is the result I want. 
and I guess the intended result is, yeah, it's fine. I'm fine with it. Dante would not be proud, not enough nips. Well, you know, these guys just know not to be uh, blacklisted by YouTube, right? Demonetized, blacklisted, what have you. I don't think anyone's complaining about the choice. I, for one, approve hey, Gloom Shadows. <laughs> I'm not worried about you at all. I, I, I've caught into you already. <laughs> Derek as well. And no matter how innocent Derek acts. I know Derek likey. Mr. I try not to swear on stream. My virgin eyes. Thank you for the fart. Thank you for the fart time, Rex, and welcome. Welcome to uh, McClin Talks. Late night with Mac. We gotta find a name for these. Red Shoe Diaries. Um, yeah, how, how's everyone's week? McClintock, exactly, Derek. That you, you coined that one. That one's yours. I have to pay you royalties every time I, <laughs> every time I say it. Sure, Derek. Sure. Oh, talk about Derek's virgin eyes. McClintock sounds amazing. Tyrant ranks. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope your RE four, your RE streams in general. I hope they've been going great. It was, it was cool to be able to check your uh, RE4 treasure hunt stream out a few nights ago. Derek, well done. Derek, yo, Derek's, Derek's got quite the uh, good piece of gray matter in between in between those shoulders, underneath that uh, beanie. Do not underestimate Derek. But yeah, how, how was everyone's week? Does I want to have anything? Like we were just talking about music. Musical taste. Does anyone want to share the type of music that they're really into? Maybe you're into like uh, a jazz or you know some some genre of music that hasn't been mentioned already. Feel free to bring it up. I got nothing but skull except Murka. Rub them brain cells together. Derek, before we uh, roll into something else, I gotta ask you every every single time. How was work? Did you um? Do the uh, <laughs> what do you call those? What do you call those presentations again? Ah, oh, damn it! How could I forget? You do those, those presentations. Did you like overshare? Did you have to uh, present more things to your manager and get feedback from your manager again? I hope you're not working tonight or during during this weekend. Seems like you've been working like cray cray lately. I've been rocking Creed and Nickelback. Creed, Nickelback, to each their own. Creed, I, I've, I've, uh, remember some good tunes from them back in the day. But we don't judge. I shouldn't judge. Nickelback, isn't the Chad Kruger guy from Nickelback? Is he, is he still married to uh, Avril Lavigne? They're still hooked up, right? They're still, they're still together. Chatty, Chad, Chad. Everyone doesn't know Nickelback, but it's a band that everyone secretly loves. You know what? They're not where they are from because everyone hates them, right? Somebody's buying those albums. Somebody's buying those iTunes tracks. Somebody, right? It just become like a pile on o over time, right? Nickelback is good. Yeah, we have another Nickelback fan here, lazy. A pile on, a pile on, not a pile on. It's not Starcraft. <laughs> hey, Gamer Scoop, first, it's first in our hearts again. <laughs> I always have to say that if you're not actually first, you're first in our hearts. Coop, easy first. Hey, Coop, how's it going? Well, <laughs> thank you. The farts, the farts are getting business tonight. Man, oh man. Am I glad I fixed up my sound alerts board. How the hell we wind up like this? Yes, it works. Yeah, I had to fix it up. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Look at this phonograph. <laughs> Just saying, it's the one band that majority of people will say they don't like, but will know and sing every song when they're on the radio. 
Oh, it's Keanu. I know Kung Fu. Oh, that's good time with the music. The music dropped, and then Keanu goes, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> nice one, nice one. Who redeemed that? Gamer's Coop, good one, good one, good instincts. Look at this stuff, stares in the camera holding a random photo. <laughs> I listen to everything, I listen to a gopher if it sounded musical. The drinky drink is out of stock? That's impossible, Allie. I think the uh, redemptions are like not treating you well lately, Allie Bug. Audio and to bed. Audie, have yourself a good night. Thank you for the bits earlier. You kind, kind, sweet lady, you. Saying? Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I ain't shook because fuckers try to take me out and stuff, but they can't, right? Know what I'm saying? You're saying, know what I'm saying? Too many times, 80 or 90 times. That's too many times. Once or twice is cool, but 80 or 90 times, man. What are you from the department of know what I'm saying? In, Jono, in Jonathan Dorrance's defense, I don't think he said, know what I'm saying, 80 or 90 times. I think his friend's exaggerating just a little bit. John Jones, hello. Welcome in, John Jones here. What the hell is on Joey's head? <laughs> Nickelback. I gotta fix that one. I apologize. The rookie numbers, the, the volume is just so low. I just need to find a better clip. Oh wait, that's Creed. Sir Jonathan Jones. <laughs> oh, we got some more song lyrics. Hold me now, I'm six feet from the edge and I'm thinking. Seriously, what the fuck is on his head? I don't worry about Joey. <laughs> what you up to? Hey, we're we're just doing our Friday night uh, end of month uh, chit chat stream, and uh, that's that's really it. Um, I uh, I suppose the backup plan is if we get tired of chatting with each other or chatting with me, then I, I'll just resort to playing more MK11. But uh, Every time on these chats, on these streams, that I said like, oh, if chat, you know, quiets down, then maybe I'll play a game. And that's never happened. We've always had things to chat about for the whole two hours. Yeah, it's a comfy stream, exactly. I hope I can make it comfortable, settle in, crack open a, a morning beer. Uh, <laughs> what is the weekend for you? You're fully into your weekend. So yeah, sit back, crack open a beer. Wasn't it nice, by the way, John Jones, to uh, watch Serpent Slayer play uh, Fight Night Champion last night? That was that was uh, some good times. That brought back uh, some memories, eh? That's a good ass game, that Fight Night Champion. I'm always tired of chatting with these losers. Ooh, comfy streams are the best. Just chilling, especially you. Oh, come on, tyrant. That's um, some toxic toxic behavior there. I had a one hour over, Overwatch 2 stream early today. It was lit. One hour? That's not, that's not long enough, but that's a one lit hour, eh? Gamer's Coop? Who call a loser? You want to scrap? And you, by the way, speaking as, you know, as, as older adults here, you know, you're using the terminology well. The lit, skin your lits in. I like it. Did you, uh, I guess, did you win a lot? I guess you were winning, son, huh? Uh, on the Overwatch 2 today. That's why Mac brought me. The champ is here. Who you going a loser? He, he won a scrap. For real, for real. I break people's necks and shit. <laughs> the the high priest of the warrior clan of Waffle House is always ready to scrap. Yeah, we want a good bit. Nice, nice. Oh shit. Serpent Streams was junk, junk lit yesterday. I didn't know you had Waffle House rank status. I must challenge you. Fight Night Champion sure holds up even today. It sure does. John Jones. And as for the Waffle House ranks, I think if you visit uh, Tyrant Rex's stream, then you'll get 
you get the whole system laid out. You'll have the whole pyramid scheme laid out for you if you're interested in learning about how to, you know, join <laughs> join the clan. If you uh, feel hard, take bacon from my plate. <laughs> Going to lurk, have a friend in distress and will probably not return. Okay, lazy. Uh, take care of your friend. Uh, have a good night. And uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you, man. I'm fucking dying. Yes, I, I do hope this is a comfy stream and we have Lust here below me to keep us company as well. She's ready to crack the whip in case anyone gets out of line. So if this were if this stream were a Waffle House, then she is the uh, dominatrix of my Waffle House. Take care of all your peeps. That's right, man. Waffle House scraps take a certain type of prowess to engage in. <laughs> the great crackheads of yore have trained me well. <laughs> <laughs> Give us Coop as Telly Tart Rex about about Wolf House scraps. This is this could become a, a a contest of Wolf House will and Wolf House knowledge. I'm thinking of streaming again, but mix up some days. No mic streams when late night gaming, since I'm gonna be a night owl soon. Yeah, it would be great to see you get on the the streaming. Horse again, uh, John Jones. You would be called John Jones here on your channel, I, I, I assume. And for your return to streaming, uh, what uh, game do you have in mind? What is your what is your uh, return to form video game? Is he going to spend time amongst those that serve the brown ashes? It seems they have the most battle-tempered spirits. Oh god, are we... I'm going to have to see some um, some more material on this to learn more about the Wolf House lore. Tyrant Rex, I think... I think a platform like YouTube or even TikTok would be perfect for you to sort of dispense Wolf House learnings and lore to the masses. I think you should look into it. Speaking of TikTok, I find it rather cool that um, I keep bumping into people that I know from Twitch uh, on TikTok. Like someone will just reach out and send me a follow, and then, or I'll just notice someone in a suggestion from the app. Be like, hey, oh, oh, this person, I know this person, and I'll just follow follow them back or follow them. Von Kenny, thank you for the gas. You got a bit of a standard gas, just a just a toot little toot. Thank you very much. Uh, rookie 1922, classic, classic rookie, vintage rookie. I gotta wait to <laughs> change this name. So you still want to change it, eh? You mean change it back? Oh, I see what you mean, Derek. Come on, Twitch. Just remember, throwing chairs will be punished severely by our gods. For let it be written, let no customer cast the chair lest they be cast down by our finest warriors. Oh, that's fucking dope. What did I say, Gamer Scoop? <laughs> I'm senile now. now. What, what did I say that's dope? <laughs> I'm losing it. You know what? I'm making another account now. I'm not waiting two months for a name change. Oh, you talk about? Uh, I was talking about TikTok, wasn't I? Yes, yes, I was. Indeed, it has been acknowledged. Chair throwing is a skill that the grill masters of Wolf House have mastered ages ago. Hence, their immunity to it. I've heard legend of those that eat the pie have the stomachs of the legendary bovine. <laughs> you mentioned the TikTok shit. Yes, that's right. It came back to me. It came back to me. <laughs> Before long, smart play. Yeah, TikTok. Oh, I have very mixed feelings about TikTok. Um, I do feel it's a garbage app, full of garbage things. 
And yet, I know when I pull it open, I am guaranteed at least, at least 10 seconds of unadulterated joy or entertainment. Get my 10 to 20 second hit of just like, the fuck is this? And oh my God, I just want to swipe and see what's next. Dude, my TikTok algorithm is fucking fire, lol. There is some gold in there. there I agree, there, there are some diamonds in the rough. There are some um, nuggets of corn in the poop that you can dig out of uh, TikTok. But uh, overall, I just feel it's like a harbinger of like our doom or something. It really is. I have a very maybe boomer perspective on TikTok. And, and yet I, I haven't deleted it and I keep just uh, networking on it. And I have nothing on my uh, page as of yet. I keep thinking that maybe I'll try to put something on my TikTok one of these days. And I'm thinking about considering Yakuza Ishin. Been a while since I played that or any game for that matter. I'm platinum some games on stream instead of off stream. Yes. Treat yourself to some gaming. You know, if you if you feel the itch, John Jones, yeah. And if you feel like streaming, I, I'd love to see you stream again. Streamed UFC 4 and kick some ass. Who said that? It looks like three months for my TikTok algorithm to get tolerable and now it is pristine. It's pristine, eh? So before that three months elapsed, what was your TikTok stream? <laughs> it was less than pristine, hmm? I'd watch Yakuza. Yeah, same here. I'd watch Yakuza. Although I, you know, I keep saying UFC 4. Yeah, Rook, treat yourself. My man. We all homies here, bro. Yeah, you guys have not witnessed a shellacking if you haven't yet seen a John Jones here play UFC 4 against randos specifically he'll play the stand and bang mode against randos and he'll just clown on pretty much everyone <laughs> like Matrix style I'm Keanu Reeves or I'm Lawrence Fishburne and I'm just going to make you look like garbage and un unfortunately make make you disconnect or something before the match is over that that does happen a little too often unfortunately but that's the uh that's the online gaming community for you right am okay you know what i feel like switching switching the image again i do have the um Attention span of a gnat. Let's see what else we got on the menu. Let's see what else we got here. I do like this channel. For the music, of course. For the music. Obviously. <laughs> Look at some of these thumbnails, man. Uh, the female form is... Is, is is an amazing thing. That's all I can say. And, and this, this channel obviously appreciates as well. And I like their own little like Cyberpunk City intros as well. It's very cool, very cool. I'm glad I found this channel. We saw you rocking those foos, don't lie. Serpent definitely gave me the itch yesterday to play it again, though it's been four months, I've been retired. Oh, being retired don't mean nothing. I'm gonna head off, I'm running late, have a good stream, Mag, bye everyone. Hey, Argentine Wolf. Take care, man. A woo for the road. <clears throat> That's one for the road. Night Night Wolf. Yeah. Bark. I want to see some MK now. 
Oh, nice. Let's spar. The last uh, Jackie Chan movie I watched was on Netflix. It was called The Foreigner. It wasn't bad. I wasn't expecting too much from it, but it turned out to be pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. It was like a Jackie Chan version of Taken. That movie had a good story. Yes, it was surprisingly good on the story front. Gamer Scoop. Like, they got in some... Who else was in that freaking movie? They got in some legit actors to play uh, some of the supporting characters in, in The Foreigner. Uh, I was actually really... That was a pleasant surprise. I love the Drunken Master movies. The Drunken Master movies are classics. Definitely. Drunken Master 2 especially. You know, that, that very famous end battle that, you know, in the, in the coals coal factory or whatever it was against the dapper well-dressed kickmaster pierce brosnan was in the four. Oh, that's right yeah yeah pierce pierce put in a good turn as, as the as the baddie in the in, in the foreigner i like jackie chan movies but i was always more of a Jet Li fan jackie chan is my second favorite though oh did you ever drink drinky drinky there we go there we go oh man you're just on me right away Pull this bug. <laughs> I can't hear a thing with drinky drinky back. Cheers, Ellie Bug. Here we go. My uh yeah, my, my camera is really high. It's my uh shield tin tin mug. Against the rat. Throwing alcohol on Chan to get him on fire. That's right. And he just went into beast mode after he got some uh Liquor inside him. Liquor inside him, I mean. I miss those kind of movies now. They don't make them no more. Yeah, they don't. Like, even out of Hong Kong, they've just gone away. I mean, there's been, like, a passing of the guard or... or like, all, all the big stars in Hong Kong that do those type of movies, like Jackie Chan, they all went over to Hollywood, and they all got old, right? So, everyone has their... Um, Everyone has their limit and their stopping points, right? I mean, even in The Foreigner, The Foreigner, Jackie Chan's already like 60 in his 60s, probably. And, you know, comparatively, he's doing a lot, of, he's still doing his own stunts and he looked really good, but the complexity and scale of the stunts was way, way, way lower than in his heyday, right? He definitely did not want to die. He was definitely thinking about not dying as he filmed that movie. And of course, it's not like a Hong Kong production where they don't give a shit. <laughs> He's still breaking his ankles. Yes, I think they saw some, they had some outtakes on that one, did they? No, 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 did they? I don't remember now. But he is still hurting himself, but he is very old now. So old is gold, you're never too old. Unless you're doing Jackie Chan movies. His movie, Police Story, was so gritty and dope. Highly recommend. Oh, Police Story is amazing, too. Was it Police Story 2? Where they had that awesome battle in the mall? Poop? Am I thinking about the right Police Story? Where it's just like, non-stop, like... <laughs> tons upon tons of the, the movie glass being broken? In that in that scene, I'm too mature for most people. I'm an old man, aren't aren't we all? Do y'all get into Donnie Yen Ip Man movies at all? Oh, those are great. Gloom Shadows. I watched all four of the the Ip Man movies. Yeah, those are great. I think those were like instrumental in helping Donnie Yen break out in the uh, Western market. Uh, I think people still knew about him before those movies, but I mean, the Inman movies really put him on the map, I think. I recall the one who was in the club fighting those. Oops. 
where he was on the club fighting those dudes who were making moves on his daughter. She was dating a gangster. Assuming Tyrant and Mag are the oldest then. Uh, I'm not sure about Tyrant. Um, but it's probably going to be like me, Tyrant, Derek as the elder statesman in, in the in the stream tonight. Donnie Yen is goated. Flashpoint, Killzone, SPL, Kung Fu Killer, all of it. I saw John Wick 4 mostly just for him. He's excellent. Love Iman series. Oh, so you saw John Wick 4? Yes. So, um... You loved it. Um, man, I still gotta watch that one. I, I still wonder if I can catch in the theaters John Wick 4. Those are great movies. Also, welcome in, welcome in Chainsaw Twin Destroyer. Thank you. Yes, really appreciate all the help and tips tonight. I'm 35. Ah, oh, gamers coop. You're still a spring chicken. There's only so many times I can see Leon get cut up before it gets old. <laughs> Gloom shows you were playing uh, Resident Evil 4. Uh, earlier today and you had a uh, tyrant uh, helping you out give me give me his pro tips seeing as tyrant rex had uh i don't know if you platinum the game tyrant but you definitely sucked the marrow out of that one from the sound of it i was yeah it's my first playthrough so i've been getting all the rex pro tips on oh, nice nice Gamer's Coop is 35. I know uh, Derek outranks him by just a little bit. Uh, I don't know about Tyrant, though. But, you know, don't feel like you have to disclose your ages here. I mean, I know some streams are extremely sensitive to age talk. So, um, yeah, I don't feel like we need to, like, have this weird age measuring contest or something. I was the, uh, I, I have been fucking that game up. I hunt the enemies now, they don't hunt Leon. <laughs> hey, Gary Scoop, you're a seasoned Resident Evil player. So that don't surprise me one bit. My pro tip was be polite, be efficient, have a plan to kill everyone you meet. <laughs> it's like you're giving tips to like a, a, a double O, like James Bond agent. What was the um, the the um, the mantra or the or the life lesson that uh, that was given in the other like uh, secret agent series? Oh, it's like what's that, what's that movie called again? It had it starred Colin Firth. Drawing a blank now. Drawing a blank now. They've had like three of those movies now. Fuck everyone, die happy. She's pretty, she could be a planted assassin. John Wick 4 was supposed to be the first, was supposed to be the final, but now Lansky is entering chapter 5. Of course! Production companies love money, just like anyone else, right? But please, no John Wick 4 spoilers. Still very new, and I haven't seen it yet. But uh, chapter five doesn't surprise me at all. As long as I didn't kill Johnny Boy in chapter four, they can make it chapter five. If they want to do a John Wick movie without John Wick, then they ought to just make a spin-off series. Um, I got to do some quick research here on the side off screen. 
off screen. Here we go. So, Taron Egerton is the star. Because I looked up, he's in the Tetris movie. So I just gotta look up his filmography. And then, Kingsman! That's what I was thinking of. Kingsman, The Secret Service. That's right, that's right. And then what was his... <laughs> that's right. Manners maketh man. <laughs> All that, just to remember that line. Okay, I got it now. Took my eyes off chat, what's going on now? I'm gonna watch The Fifth Element tonight as I sleep. Hey! There's something, there's definitely something cool about watching uh, a movie that you like. Uh, watch it to love yourself to sleep. Not because the movie itself is boring or anything, but just because it's familiar and it's cozy, right? Is it really your favorite movie of all time, Derek? I mean, it's a damn good movie. L let's not uh, get that twisted. But I, I never actually got around to asking you about your favorite movies, right, Derek? So this is this interesting. Fifth Element was one of those movies that I kind of put in the same sort of bucket as the matrix or something or even john wick where when you first heard about the movie there wasn't this like universal like excitement for it there were some you know doubters some haters and it wasn't until people's the word of mouth started to spread and then people caught on to it it's like yeah yeah this is a damn good movie fifth element was one of those movies I'd rather they stop, end it on chapter, uh, but make a prequel with John Wick instead to show his origin story and that impossible task talked about in John Wick 1. Yes! How he became the Baba Yaga, right? That's a good idea, John Jones. You should um, get on the phone with, uh, with a Hollywood producer. Pitch him. Corbin Dallas? <laughs> yeah, Chris Tucker's... Chris Tucker's in... In that movie, just the right amount, I would say. They really use them well in the fifth element. Multipass. Ruby Rod. <laughs> uh, Ruby Rod. Chicken good. That movie is hot, hot, hot. I'm going to F Floston Paradise this summer. Floston Paradise. Corbin, my man. Corbin. Bo Cor Corbin, Meg is the finest quality. What is the finest quality, Tyrant? I lost the thread on myself. Yep, Fifth Element, Pulp Fiction, and Shawshank Redemption, and Mighty Ducks 2. Oh my god, you're putting Mighty Ducks 2 alongside those Titans, Derek? Pulp Fiction. I remember I was so excited to see Pulp Fiction, but I wasn't old enough to go see an R-rated movie, so I kind of... Oh, hey, uh, Rikyo. We know Riku is in the house because he's redeeming. He's 45. <laughs> oh, John Jones, you never seen the fifth element? Oh, it's great. It's great. It's um It's kinda hard to explain. It's science fiction, it's action, it's comedy. It's high, it's high science fiction, right? It's got a little bit of like cyberpunk into it, but it was so ahead of its ahead of itself. I show it to people these days, and they are like, "How the fuck did I never see this film?" That along with Boondock Saints. Are you listening off the DVDs in my house? <laughs> yes. Let's give it a solid watch. It's tough to explain, but so much to enjoy. But yes, Coop, I agree. Hard to explain for sure. Watch the trailer. I think you'd like it. 
futuristic sci-fi action mystery etc look at that movie eh? it's it's the actress from resident evil but yes yes mila it was her first role uh how you doing reek uh how's your night howdy howdy can't stay long playing siege okay nice nice the fifth element is finest quality. Okay, Tyrant Rex. You right, you right. Bruce Willis, Chris Tucker, Debo, and Bruce Willis. Okay. A model turned actress and absolutely destroyed it. And Gary Old Gary Oldman. Zorg. Oh, so good. Gary Oldman's amazing at everything he does. Gary Oldman didn't give a fuck. When he was in the fifth element, fifth element, they probably just told him, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, he, you're a villain. Just make something up. Just go, and we'll go with it. And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> By the way, we're going to give you this haircut. You you cool? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Consummate professional. That Gary. Don't you forget the Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg. Exactly. Gary Oldman needs to be renamed Gary Everyman for how many roles he's done. That's a solid cast right there. Don't forget Ian Holm. Right? Who, who played Bilbo Baggins in the Lord of Rings movies. And The Hobbit, I, I guess, as well. The Fifth Element trailer is enough to bring you in. But then you... When you watch it, just sit back and enjoy the ride. There's there aren't many dull moments. It really is. Fuck, we need to do a fit element watch party now. <laughs> he writes. I would done so they haven't seen it. You know what? Tonight I was actually a month ago or so, I was actually thinking tonight would be a watch party on Discord. Um I think the trouble is just to find the right time. So it's been find the right time, find the right movie. So I think we can add the fifth element to to the docket as a as a possibility. I may buy it on YouTube and stream it in Discord. Nice, nice. You probably already own own on disc, right, Coop? But yeah, uh, YouTube. I think you'll have John Jones agree with you. YouTube seems to be a really cool place to start building up a collection, a movie collection. I haven't taken the plunge myself, but more and more YouTube is sort of putting it front and center of like, yeah, you can you can buy digital movies, high quality digital movies on YouTube. So what are you waiting for? I have a five disc collector's version. Lol. <laughs> nice. Nice coop. How I should not be su surprised at all. Gamers Coop has good taste. In finer things in life, gaming, movies, this experiment. I'm gonna buy it on YouTube and stream it here. John Jones here will be put to the test. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna uh, stream it on Twitch tonight, today. Do it, dude. If you buy it, money will spend. Oh yeah, I mean. Don't, uh, you know, there's options that you can rent, you can buy. Yeah, you just buy it. I don't think the, the price would be that different either. And it, it's, a, it's a good movie, for real. I think you will enjoy it very much. I'm going to sacrifice this account. <laughs> Four dollars to rent. Thirteen dollars. OK, well, there that's a significant difference. I thought it'd be a little bit closer, actually. If I get by and they don't notice, I'm going to stream a shit ton of movies. Hey, you know, make this your burner account. Sacrifice it, as you say. Nah, stream Discord, homie. It's safe that way. It is much safer. But um, I, I get the feeling John Jones is just thinking about 
put it on Twitch just because he wants the discoverability. <laughs> he does want the Twitch cops to discover him, maybe. I never tried streaming in Discord. I don't know how it works. Um, you, you you make a voice channel essentially, and then in, in the voice channel options, you can just share your screen, and that's basically it. There's like one setting to change in Discord to broadcast it. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you just do a search on YouTube, you'll find like 50, 50 uh, 10 minute videos. <laughs> 10 drawn out 10 minute videos on how to do it. The goal has become the law on Twitch. You'll be judged dread of Twitch. Cool. Now I get all, all those Discord watch parties. Yeah, I, I want to try and do one. And uh, but when I organize, it, I just want to make sure it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna catch the most people. It's gonna be the most convenient time for the most amount of people. Um, it's, it's tough though. It's tough. I cannot limit. I I already know that I cannot limit myself to when I'm actually streaming on my 9 to 11 p.m. time slot. I'll have to find a different time. But I would love to do watch parties of uh, Bloodsport. That's that's a movie I, I, I've talked to John Jones about. And of course, my, my all time favorite aliens, James Cameron's aliens. And yeah, we can add the fifth element to to that pile. Lots of options. I own Smile as well, if you all are interested. Oh, I, I, I heard about that one. That one looks kind of interesting. I like me my creepy horror movies for sure. I seem to talk about it a lot, like asking the viewers if they want to watch the next episode of Attack on Titan on Discord. I often wondered how that works. How do movies and Discord voice channels work? Like, is everyone muted during the film and then chat after? I haven't seen a movie night yet. Yeah, ideally you mute. Text chat is acceptable to discuss the movie. Yeah, that would make sense. Otherwise, you would not be able to focus on the movie at all. They'd just be like, it'd just be like in a movie theater where no one will shut up, right? Not quite as bad because you're you're among friends and <laughs> followers of your Discord and uh, Twitch. But, you know, it's just like you're watching a, a home a movie at home with a bunch of friends. Normally, you're not just chatting all throughout the movie. I mean, you'll have the peanut gallery always, but if you want no spoilers at all in text chat, just invite Serpent. <laughs> How many uh, watch parties have you done on Discord, uh, Gamer Scoop? And which, which movies have you done watch parties for? All you will read is mad WTF Boonk Gang throughout the whole film. It will be just be like a spam bot, right? John Jones. <laughs> I've done watch parties where the talkers identify themselves and get muted. And those who like to chat during movies stay unmuted. <laughs> well, true. I've done Superman, Far From Home, Smile, anime series, etc. Nice, nice. You've you're you're an old hand at this watch party game. I see. I've yet to pot. pot <laughs> well, I can't talk. I've yet to pop my uh, watch party cherry. Someday, someday I shall. How are you guys liking the uh, image below me? You guys ready to change or do you like this one? I kind of like this one. This one's classy. This overnight album cover. I, I do like this one quite a bit. Very classy, very tasteful. Yeah, yeah. The other one, I was chuckling when I was looking through my options and seeing the thumbnails and there's just one where like the, the, the girls have their legs splayed open like spread eagle <laughs> it's like um <laughs> yes and no yes and no that one's a toughie but there are other options i'm not limited to just these few oh, 
I feel like like this um, Spotify playlist is actually really short. So I put on repeat. But I don't feel like things have been repeating. One track, like these are all really short tracks. I'm afraid it's actually auto-play to another playlist, but it's all royalty free still, I think. Yeah, it's still royalty free. Good old Spotify. Okay. Uh, so. Like 10 hours ago, after I asked Derek about how his work was, Derek did respond. He said work has been super silly. And I just got carried away and I forgot to follow up about why work has been so hectic for you, Derek. Drinky, drinky. Thank you very much, Ali Bug. You've been strangely quiet tonight, but that's cool. Thank you for uh, redeeming the water. I surely need it tonight. I hope everyone's got some uh, good, good fun things planned for the weekend. Ah, work that nine to five struggle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. John Jones, uh, is your work going well? Uh, are you are you still in in the biz, in the in the bed business? And uh, I think way back at the beginning of the stream, Derek did mention about still doing his taxes. I wasn't sure if Derek, you were joking or not, but I had filed my taxes. Okay, I filed it two nights ago. I got it done on Sunday and I like to sit on it and then come back and review like a day or two later. And then uh, the exactly one day after I filed, one of my um, accounts finally emailed me the tax receipt that I thought that I thought it wasn't available this year. I just thought, oh, okay, I guess I didn't make any money, so didn't bother putting out a, a tax statement for me. But then almost exactly 24 hours after I filed, he sent to me, I was like, oh shit. Well, luckily I just refiled, easy peasy. Um, by the way, if you are a Wealth Simple customer, you get to use their tax filing software and I think it's excellent. And you don't have to pay a dime. They'll try to hit you up to do like a donation. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't have to pay a cent if you don't if you don't want to. And it's I mean, I guess if you have a more complicated financial situation, it may be a little bit limiting, but for the average Joe, the way it's designed is just so smooth and seamless. It, it blows U-File out of the water. U-File had used for like four or five years. And I used to think it was good, but it's slowly become kind of like quite clunky. But the Well Simple Tax uh, filing program is, is, is nice. I'm very happy with it. An endless cycle of work for the rest of your life. Man, I need to escape this matrix. I'm going to spend the next six months getting jacked again. I file as soon as humanly possible. If the government owes me money back, I don't want them continuing to have my money. Exactly, Tyrant. So I was trying to, I was trying to get my stuff done early, but there's a balance between getting it done super early and actually waiting to get all your documents in order. And back when like everything was done through snail mail, like you'd have like the one or two outliers that just wouldn't send you what you needed until like three or four weeks before the deadline. But nowadays, I mean, they're much better where you can just log into your account. You just download a PDF and you're good to go. So yes, things have gotten better for tax filing. That is for sure. 
You want that secret juice to get jacked? Oh my. You have the sweat of the great Arnold. <laughs> the one and only. Oh man. Sweat of the Arnold. I want to make it look like that. Make it look like that. The uh, thumbnail is attached to the chat window or something. Move it. Move it around a bit. Uh, that's a bit too much, actually. There we go. Nah, I need to get disciplined again. I can still bench 175 for 15 though. John Jones here, do you do lift? Nate Diaz, everybody's on steroids. And the look on Carter's face, he was so pissed, said, shut your fucking mouth, mate. Don't commit me to juice heads. Oh my goodness. Connor has had some nice war, war words with uh, various fighters over the years, hasn't he? His Nate Diaz, um, his Nate Diaz phase was definitely a, a high point. So what's the deal with Nate Diaz? Is Nate Diaz really set to fight um, Paul? Is that is that actually gonna happen? Winnie, welcome in. How's it going, man? Very nice to see you. Uh, happy Friday. Happy Happy Friday. And welcome to the weekend. If this is indeed your weekend. We're, we're just having a, a cozy stream. I'm good. Happy Friday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're having a cozy stream, just chit chatting. We're just running through the various topics of the day, you know, all the good stuff. You know, what, what type of music do you like to listen to? What are some good movies to watch? Talk about the work grind. It seems good for business, yeah, since Jake Paul excels at fighting retired, washed up fighters. Just stating the facts. I am not gonna get any uh, argument here. Isn't he good for business? I think after uh, challenging uh, Fury, Jake Paul has to do uh, some better matchmaking for himself. Better to win against the washed up than to be washed up. I mean, winning is winning. Uh, if you're going to be fighting cans, at least fight like the most famous ones. Fight the cans that will bring in a, a bit of a payday. But I don't know, like after his uh, split decision loss to Tommy Fury, I don't know if you call it the mystique, but I, <laughs> the mystique of Jake Paul has been, you know, tarnished a little bit. It feels like until that happened, until he lost to Fury, I guess there are enough people that are thinking, oh, you know, maybe there is something to this Jake Paul kid. You know, sure, he's he. he. Who did he freaking fight early on? That wrestler from Bellator. <laughs> the guy who came into the boxing match like overweight. 
was obviously not a boxer. He's a he's a friggin' wrestler and MMA fighter. I have a I had a tough time remembering people. Uh, ben Askren, thank you, John Jones. Leave it to the the young guns, actually. <laughs> Do do a fast file search in the memory banks and give you give you the name that you seek. Thank you. Yes, Ben Askren. By the way, Ben Askren's wife is is quite uh, quite the pretty lady. But yes, he fought Ben Askren, and knocked, knocked him out. But of course he did, because Ben Askren's not known for his striking at all. A very, very proficient wrestler, so I've heard. But yeah, I mean, shit. Even if you fight and beat a guy like Ben Askren, that's still something because Ben Ben Askren is somewhat known. I guess like from there, Jake Paul's really stepped up like the the notor notoriety ladder. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, John Jones, that Tyron Woodley uh, song, quote unquote song that you uh, posted to the Discord was just I couldn't I couldn't finish watching it. it. It's too painful. When you realize the UFC did Mighty Mouse dirty, tried to shut that division down, and brought Ben Askren to replace him back in the day, only to fail miserably. Did it? That was their actual plan. That was Uncle Dana's plan to bring in Ben Askren to make up for ditching Mighty Mouse, chasing Mighty Mouse away. Man, they did, yeah, they definitely did Mighty Mouse dirty. For those who don't know, UFC, um, they have, what, the, is that the flyweight division? So they had like, a champion who ruled the flyweight division, Demetrius Johnson, aka Mighty Mouse. A very dominant champion, super skilled fighter. Now the problem was the flyweight division, these were the small guys, they didn't get any respect. And the USC did very little to sort of push that division and give it the attention and promotion that it that it should have gotten, right? They put too much focus on the higher weight classes, the heavyweights, the middleweights, the light heavyweights. And uh, subsequently, the the dominant, one of the most dominant champions the UFC has had, Demetrius Johnson, uh, was kind of getting fed up because he wasn't getting his pay, he wasn't getting his due, he wasn't getting, I guess, his pay-per-view cuts, his royalties. And then he would just have to deal with like outright disdain from the UFC's president. And eventually he just left, right? He, he couldn't he couldn't take it anymore. The UFC thought Ben is the shit shit out new star. Then game bread Mosvid will happen. He ended Ben's hype train in five seconds with that flying knee nug. I gotta see that. <laughs> I never saw it fight. <laughs> but yeah Mosvidal, yeah I do like Mosvidal. He he's a uh, He's just one of those guys, like one of those guys who will never become champion. But he's definitely up there in like the top ten, and he's and he's always dangerous. He, he's a he's a he's a stiff test in that division. Oh, that was legendary! You gotta see it. Oh man, I'm gonna look it up tonight. Fastest KO in UFC history. Oh man, I've got to see that. Anyway. For those who are not combat sports fans, I, I apologize for going on this big tangent about Ben Askren and uh, Demetrius Johnson, but just to kind of link things back to gaming, Mighty Mouse uh, still fights. He fights for one championship, which is a, a Asian Asia-based fight promotion. Seems to be doing much better there. And he has like a moonlighting gig as a YouTube streamer. He also did used to start, he used to stream on Twitch, but then similar to uh, his fall of the USC, he decided that he just wanted to uh, switch over to switch camps to YouTube. So he's uh, mostly just like a, a gameplay streamer on YouTube, but he, you know, 
chops up his stuff to, to make into YouTube videos now and then. And he does a lot of reaction videos of um, street beefs, that sort of stuff. <laughs> He's a very entertaining um, streamer, I would say. Because he mixes in a lot of talk about the fight biz in amongst his gaming stuff. He also knows his video games. So yeah, it's really, I highly rec recommend you check out Mighty Mouse on YouTube. I see that it says to tell you my deepest desires. <laughs> yes, you know, I'm just looking for some clickbait shit to put in my uh, uh, stream titles, Tyrant. You know how it is. And basically I give myself like five to 10 seconds to come up with something when I'm filling in that, that box on OBS. So if you feel like telling us some of your deepest desires, uh, feel free to go ahead and chat. So many of these fighters are starting a YouTube channel of their own with reactions and stuff. Yes, yes. And you know what? Some of them aren't half bad. Uh, I think I mentioned some to you before. But early today, I was watching uh, Henry Cejudo do a breakdown and predictions for the um, Alex and Izzy fight next weekend. And that's an excellent, he did an excellent breakdown. I I've watched some of his breakdowns before and they're always good. They're always very good. Uh, it helps that Henry Cejudo himself is like extremely, like an extremely analytical person, uh, as well as being a, a, an Olympian level wrestler and like a two time UFC champion. So, yeah, you get a lot of great insights from him. He's also got a pretty engaging personality. He's sort of leveraged his. He sort of took a heel turn for a bit. It became like a bad trash talker. <laughs> but then, yeah, he's kind of refines that uh, persona a bit. And he's kind of parlayed it into a nice um, YouTube uh, side gig. I'm going to post that in the Discord uh, after the stream tonight. Um, John Jones. It's a really good breakdown of the Alex and Izzy fight coming up. Henry Cejudo is another one that quit fighting until Dana pays him more. Did Henry Cejudo also quit UFC? I thought he was still with the UFC. I deeply desire to generally feel like I am the Waffle House Warrior of Waffle House Warriors. To have the admiration of all men and desire of all women. Well. I, I can't... I can't say that I haven't felt a similar desire before, Tyrant. I know that, um, what's the guy's name again? <laughs> I'm think I'm still thinking about um, combat sports, but there is a uh, another Dagestani fighter coming up the ranks with a lot of hype now. He's got the Mongolian blood in him, Shavkat or something. John Jones, help me out again here. But he's on like a seven seventeen fight tear right now, and. Um, yeah, uh, on my YouTube feed recently, they they shown a lot of clips of the Laura Shanko, who's like a MMA commentator, and she's just like lusting over a Shav Shavkat Rachmanov. That's right, that's right. So like this Laura Shanko, who's like a not really a well known uh, female MMA fighter turned uh, sports commentator, and then yeah, she, they just have clips of her just lusting over Shavkat. Yeah, Henry been retired for years now. He just coaches other talent, does YouTube co-host podcast with Mike Tyson, where he said he's staying out of the UFC until Dana treats the division with more respect and value. The money wasn't worth it. Oh, okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I can totally see why. Oh, shit. The, the YouTube video's uh, over. So I got to switch. It's time to switch. Switch it up. 
Uh, give me a second here. What's the new one? What's the new one? They're just auto playing the next one here. But I want to see what it is. Uh, this one's okay. This one's okay. Enemy. I can see why Henry Cejudo has become such good buddies with uh, Mighty Mouse. They they come from the same place. In in a way, right? They used to be rivals. It's it's great to see them actually. They used to be such hard rivals of each other, and then uh, Mighty Mouse and Cejudo are, are such good buddies now. And I can see how they would have bonded over their mutual dislike of the UFC. Fun fact, John Jones got kicked out of his gym in US for his bad behavior, so Henry Cejudo brought him over to his gym, and John has been training with him for his comeback fight against Gone. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Cejudo's camp is top tier amongst amongst fight camps or his gym i should say like camp is is like a different thing but i wouldn't be surprised if Sahudo's gym is up there now because yeah i, I find henry Sahudo. i did not realize that he was such a well-spoken smart guy <laughs> he he's smart but yeah, he, he really knows his stuff when you hear him talk about uh, other fighters. Yeah, he, he's, he's great. I'm glad I started following his content. It's a good show. He's better. He's a lot better than a guy like Bisping. Bisping is entertaining. But yeah, he, 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 he clowns on Bisping in terms of like the YouTube stuff. And I find he gets to the point a lot faster, like a lot faster than Dan Hardy. I like Dan Hardy's uh, YouTube, um, what is it, Reptile whatever, <laughs> Reptile Man, whatever he calls his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Dan Hardy does a decent job. Dan Hardy used to be like a really good commentator for the UFC after he retired as a fighter, but then yeah, he had a little bit of a incident and then now he just does his own thing. Okay, I'm gonna switch the tune here. How are we doing? We're at 1033. Let's just ride out to the end of the stream, um, boys and girls. I, I really appreciate everyone just chilling with me tonight. We're doing these just chattings. These just chattings are always extra popular, extra active. And I really do appreciate everyone stopping by. Whether you're here for two hours, one hour, or one minute, or or you go and lurk, um, really appreciate the support. It was really a lot of fun as well playing Mortal Kombat 11 last night, and I and I thank anyone who stopped by yesterday uh, for that stream. Uh, I will be playing more Mortal Kombat in the future. I do feel. The fighting game bug has bitten me. So I'm fully on board for MK12 when that finally comes out. And I'm fully on board for Tekken 8. I still think Tekken 8 is going to come out in 2024. I think it would behoove them to wait and let the dust settle and clear um, for uh, Street Fighter 6. So you let Street Fighter VI own the middle of this year into you know the the latter half of 2023, and then you can safely come out with your own fighting game. Um, if you really need to come out in this year, you just release Tekken 8 in November or something. But I have a feeling Tekken 8 is gonna be like second quarter um, 2024 at the latest. Um, Street Fighter 6, there's a lot of hype on that one too. I, I'm, not, I'm on the fence on whether I'll buy that right away, but it looks really good.
I hope to see Henry Cejudo come back to the sport and beat Aljamain Sterling. There's a void in that division with him, I feel. We'll only be buying Tekken. Hey, Lazy, welcome back. I hope things are okay with your friend. Um, it's really awesome that you uh, went to help out your friend in need. I hope things are okay. Tekken, uh, you'll only be buying Tekken. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of like the big three fighters, but yeah, I definitely have a fan of Street Fighter 6. I don't know if, like if I'm being honest with myself, like the past two Street Fighters, I bought just because it was Street Fighter, but I didn't actually play all that much or find myself that interested in investing time into Street Fighter 5 or 4. Need a Street Fighter 6 open beta so I can try it out and maybe understand the hype. Otherwise, it's just Tekken 8 and MK12 for me. Yeah, yeah, John Jones. The the funny game genre is, is is weird because there's only so many games you can spread yourself thin for, right? Just because of the dedication required. If you're gonna be, especially if you're gonna be playing online, you 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 got to be practicing these games, and there's specific muscle memory for e each of those games that are not always transferable. Like the the general fighting game concepts are transferable, but the muscle memory, the button presses are not necessarily. So, um, yeah, I just tend to focus on one one at a time. So, MK12, if that comes out this year, that's great. And I hope there's at least like six to seven months in between MK12 coming out to uh, Tekken 8 coming out. Because by the time Tekken 8 comes out, I will have like, you know, passed that honeymoon phase and I've gotten sick of M MK12 for a while, put it away on the shelf. I'll be ready for something new, right? I don't like the feel of Street Fighter, a feet fighter or monkey combat. <laughs> No lie though, Mac, I could definitely use more guy friends near me. I need to look into conventions out, out here. Texas, right? Guy friends. Yeah, I, I take my guy friends for granted. I'm not gonna lie either. I, uh, I have guy friends, not a whole lot, but I take them for granted. There's a, there's a buddy of mine who like no reason at all. I had lunch with him. I was still, uh, I was in a phase of unemployment and I think he was, no, he was not unemployed. I was unemployed. And then we just had to have a lunch one day and it was a good lunch. And after that, I never saw him. Like I haven't reached out to him. This was back in 2015. Uh, and then, yeah, soon after I started working at my current company, I just kind of Never felt the need to reach out to him. Nothing, nothing that he did. And uh, the longer, the more time has passed, the harder it's been for me to sort of find a way to sort of look him up again. Because it's been so long. And tr also, we have a history where in the past, I have sort of just not made the effort to call him or, you know, ask him to hang out. And he's taken it really hard. He's, he's one of those type of people. Where it's like, if there's no constant contact between you and him as friends, he feels like the friendship is not there anymore. He, he, he does kind of expect that maintenance, right? Whereas I never was a person to expect friendship maintenance. I don't really care. If you're busy and we don't see each other for a while, then that's how it is, right? But if we see each other after five or 10 years, I will act like it's not a single day has passed. You know, to me, you're still my friend, right? I don't take it personally. But I know that everyone feels that way. I like NetherRealm Studios' idea of having story mode in their friendly games. No one else is doing that. He died. If we stop talking, just assume I'm dead. He died if we stop talking, just assume I'm dead. Like, what's going on, Lazy? There's some heavy stuff you're laying down here.
<laughs> Another Realm Studios, yeah. I mean, the feel of Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat is like the least smooth fighting game that's out there, in my opinion. It's always felt a little stiff. And uh, even after MK9, I, was it MK9 that introduced like the whole dialogue combo system? About the friend thing, well, I'm not good at tracking friends and I tell them to always assume, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we're in a similar boat, Lazy, where it's just like, yeah, you know, well, I don't tell people to assume I'm dead, though. But maybe that's, yeah, that's a big difference between us. MK9, yeah, yeah. So MK9, they brought in, like, a more in-depth combo system. But... The feeling is still there, like MK9 or just the MK series is not made by a Japanese dev and it shows. Just the the intrinsic feel of Mortal Kombat game is just just stiffer than than other fighting games. And it's something you get used to, but yeah, if I play MK11 and I switch out to playing Tekken 7, it's always gonna be like, wow, Tekken 7 feels like buttery smooth. But what Mortal Kombat has going for it is their, uh, you know, aesthetics, the lore, um, the zaniness of it all. Uh, it, it definitely has things going for it. It packs so much content in their games. Like you get a, you get a story campaign. You get, uh, well now nowadays you get like those towers. You get some mini you got like the mini game towers and uh mkx had so like the 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 clan play where you compete against other clans like the Lin Kuei versus whatever right so you do put a lot of effort into sort of packing in like a complete feature feature rich game which not a lot of fighting games do like their other fighting games are starting to catch up to that sort of thing but it's because of Mortal Kombat, I feel. Tekken has campaign. Tekken 7 story mode feels like it was inspired. Like they saw NR Studios doing it with MK, so they tried. MK is slow and butt. Too much put in for so little polish. Tekken has had stories since the first game. What you mean? I'm not saying Tekken had no story, Lazy. Or are you responding to uh, John Jones here? Tekken, was it Tekken 6? I remember had like a campaign, but it was like a beat em up. That was very strange. Tekken 6, right? The one from like 2009. You played the story campaign and it played... The, the levels were a beat em up style. Video game. MK is creative indeed. Just fighting though, I don't know what it is, but Tekken is just fun to play. That combat is a joy. That's why, um, yeah, some of the uh, Mortal Kombat, like the NRS pro players like Sonic Fox, I'm just super impressed with how when they when those guys play MK, it it looks it just looks like such a fa so much faster. The game is just so much so much faster and smoother. So it's just a, a real sort of testament to their skill to make the game look like it's smoother and faster than it really is. But yeah, yeah, hey, Lazy, of the uh, Tekken 8 character trailers that they've shown so far, which one, which one is to your liking the most? Who do you think you're, you're gonna latch onto? 
Don't get me wrong, I like them both, but I can't take how slow MK is. It's stiff. MK is like kind of stiff, right? And Sheep Fighter just makes me feel like I'm dying. Mostly lore, a shortcut scene when you finish 10 stages of battles with each fighter, but Tekken 6 and 7 has more of a story mode. Yeah, I thought for the very early Tekkens, like Tekken 1 through 3 at least, I thought it was just like a standard like arcade mode where you would fight like 8 enemies and then they'd show you a, a cutscene or you do like the, the final boss fight. Did, did like the first two Tekkens have some like primitive cutscenes in between fights or something i thought though i i thought the early the very early Tekken games are extremely bare bones i mean just mainly due to them being old games right i mean it's not like street fighter 1 and street fighter 2 had story modes or anything right tekken is more like sit back for eight hours and watch a movie before a six minute fight then back to the movie Pretty much that's exactly been Tekken up till Tekken 7. They added that separate story mode with, you know, Heihachi, Kazumi, and Kazuya's story. Yeah, I feel like Tekken 7 was the first time that actually they really did try to make an effort to do something more with their story mode where like they have a prologue. In the prologue, you're actually controlling Nina and you're fighting Heihachi. And then you they would do the whole like rotating cast where you'd control a different character for a few uh for a few levels at a time and they they'd move you on to somebody else. Which is which is kind of like a trademark of Mortal Kombat's <clears throat> Mortal Kombat story story campaign for the last last few games, right? I'm gonna switch the image one last time tonight. Always going for the visual variety, going for the visual stimulation. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> that's, that's another one I was talking about. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. Oh, you look kind of cool. All right, let's, let's go with this one. Versus music. I've been saying, saving myself for launch, so I don't know what character have been shown. If King ate in it though, I'll be showing up at their door. Oh, don't not to worry, not to worry. They 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 showed a King trailer. Don't you worry. Yes, I hope they continue story mode on Tekken 8. And since 7 was their first attempt, they sort of learned the basics now and can improve upon it, hopefully. Yeah, I think so. I think so, John Jones. Uh yeah, don't worry. There there are um there's a rather large roster of core Tekken characters that will never miss a game. Right? I think from now on, the auto includes for Tekken games. I mean, it's always been Heihachi, Kazuya, Jin. Paul is never going to miss a game. Law is never going to miss a game. So we got five right there. Uh, Nina Williams. 
has never missed a game. King may have missed a game, but then instead of King, they put an Armor King. So technically, there's always been a King in every Tekken, right? Seven. Who else have they shown? Shall you? I don't think has been ever in every Tekken, but I feel like from now on she will be in every Tekken. Like she's pretty much one of the core cast. So I'm gonna add her in there. Um, Lars. Lars, I, I feel is becoming one of those main guys too, and they always showed a Lars trailer. Jack. Yes, Jack. Oh. I think he's always going to be in a, in a in a Tekken. He's too popular. So that's 10. That's a decent number. That's a decent number of like auto includes. I'm trying to think of who else. Lee? Has Lee been in like most of the Tekkens? I mean, he is the adoptive son. He has he has missed some games, eh, Lazy? Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know if Lee has that same, like, auto-include um, power as someone like Jin or something, right? He's only been in there since Tekken 4. Okay. Good to know, good to know. I watched um, like a interview a thing that um, Bandai Namco did with uh, Michael Murray and uh, Rip and Maximilian and uh, the host was asking the two guys Rip and Maximilian who they want to be announced next for the game. I forgot who Rip mentioned. But Maximilian asked for... Oh, Rip asked for Bruce. He was like saying, get rid of Josie. <laughs> and bring Bruce back. But if you keep Josie, don't make her cry so much. And then Maximilian asked uh, them to bring uh, Eddie Gordo. Well, most, yes, but he's not in one of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, Brian. I feel like Brian is uh, is one of the core, core cast. Yeah, I mean, like... Knees main. How can you leave out Brian? So what are we at, like, 11 or 12 fighters? Tekken 7 has a surprisingly big roster after all the DLCs are out. I wonder how big they'll go with Tekken 8 roster because I heard Harada say in an interview once that we make the Tekken tech games for the bigger rosters. Well, that would make sense, right? Since you're 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 making uh, pairs of you're taking pairs of fighters or trios in, into fights. Yeah, they've always saved like a. What, like four to five slots for guest characters? Like, Tekken 7 had quite a number of guest characters. Negan. Negan's always the first one to come to mind. Noctis. Negan, Noctis. Who else? Like, a guy like Fakumram, I don't think is gonna be necessarily in Tekken 8. Forest. They will always include one of the bears, though, I feel.
Oh, Yoshimitsu. I forgot the manager. Yoshimitsu is in every every Tekken, isn't he? He he's core for sure. Yeah, and Tekken had like 15 slots for guest characters over the years, which is a lot to be fair. That is a that is a fuck ton of uh, guest character slots. That's like half of most fighting games' entire roster. Oh yeah, because he's an absolute freak. Yoshimitsu and Brian Fury got that rivalry. Yeah, those two are definitely uh, gonna be in Tekken 8, even though they haven't been announced yet. Shit, like, the core group, the core cast just keeps growing the more I think about it. It's crazy. But yeah, you know, in terms of just like people that are introduced in Tekken 7, I would definitely like to see Katarina make a return. I think she's necessary as like a, a noob friendly character. Samurai Robot versus Deviant Android. Announcing Tekken is basically announcing Yoshimitsu. <laughs> that guy is in two games, two franchises, right? Soul Calibur and Tekken. That guy. Yeah, Yoshi. Yoshi's a lock for Tekken 8, for sure. Bob has only been around since Tekken 6. I'm not a Bob fan anyway, so I don't care. Oh, there's Bayek Dosan. The, the Taekwondo guy? He was in 6, but then he wasn't in 7. So I don't know. I kind of... I kind of want him in 8. Baekdo-san. I think that's that's his name. Uh, but because they have... Um, Speed Cakes guy. What's the... <laughs> what's the, what's the that guy's a core. Oh, what's that guy? What's that guy's name? The 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 fighter that Speed Cakes is known to play. Taekwondo. I played Soul Cobra 5 back in the day. Horang, yes, thank you, John Jones. Horang has got to be in Tekken 8 as well. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. How is Soul Calibur? Soul Calibur is a lot of fun. Gotta go ensure he makes an appearance in MK12 now. <laughs> exactly. I played Soul Calibur 5 back in the day. It's good, but never got the pop play over Tekken. Oh, thanks, Ali Bug. You're just you're just hitting me with the drinky drinks tonight. Cheers. It's the last one, pretty much. And we are almost out of time. Soul Calibur, I remember renting an og xbox with some friends and we also rented soul caliber 2 and i was enamored with soul caliber 2 for like a couple weekends to the point where i was thinking man i need to just buy my own xbox even though i had no money at the time and i wasn't about to try to convince my parents to get me one uh but well, i could have bought one I felt kind of guilty about just buying a console with my own money, which I didn't have a lot of, just to play one game. But that's how much I liked Soul Calibur 2. That's the one where they had Spawn as the Xbox guest character. Yep, and so many of those characters got that rivalry, so you sort of have to add them now, or fans will keep asking for it. Yes, it's true. Once you start building those relationships between between the these characters then they become a package deal for each other right like nina and her sister anna almost in every tekken game there are 78 characters in the tekken universe that's a shit ton of characters got to get ali on the tekken train hey ali bug yes no it looks so hard it is hard uh an expert like Lazy is going to say it's, it's not too bad. And he'll teach you. I will teach you. I can barely handle it. I'm kidding. 
do it. Alley bug. It is so easy. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's a big difference between some characters, right? I mean, if you want to learn to play Katarina, that's going to be like a hundred times easier than trying to learn to play Jin or Heihachi. Tekken has auto combos. True. True. You can just turn on the auto combos. Tekken 8, I just want to say, they, they mentioned a, a new feature where the auto combos, they still have that, but you can toggle it on and off on the fly during a match, which I find pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Can't use auto combos in ranked. That makes sense. But I think in Tekken 8, I think you will be able to, because it sounds like they're just gonna have that enabled for tournaments where you can toggle on auto combos on the fly. You can use that, can turn it on in the settings. Yeah, it became a thing in Tekken 7. That was very unusual. And of course the hardcore gamers despise it, but I'm fine with it. I hope not because that'd be dumb. Well, apparently it's, um, well, they're gonna have to like tune that thing very closely. Lazy. But Michael Murray in that in that interview that they did with Rip and Maximilian, he was saying that yes, you just hit LB to toggle it on and off, and then that will only unlock a specific combo or move. It's not going to be optimal. Uh, for example, like the the fist the, that uh, the the Mishimas have the the uppercut, it'll do like the weaker version in the auto combo mode, right? If you want to do like the, the max version, you have to do, do it manually. That's good in my opinion for carries you don't main with. So it is good. They expect it will be a factor. They're designing for this where if a pro player wants to switch it on just to make sure he clutches out a specific move or combo, then he's, he's free to try it. If he really wants to make sure he doesn't drop uh, some some combo, it may not do the highest damage, or maybe he just needs to chip out in the final seconds of a match. All should learn or suffer. What's well, gonna become one of those things? If all all people have access to the same number of tools, then it just becomes another piece of the toolkit, right? Lazy. Not learning if you're only pushing one button. Yeah, essentially, if you're just relying on the auto combos, of course you're not gonna learn how to play properly, right? But it just becomes another tool in the arsenal. I think that's what they're going for. Like when I had to play as Heihachi in story mode, he's not my type of fighter too slow for me. So auto combos would be convenient. Yeah, like, it, yeah, exactly. In the Tekken 7 story mode, uh, it was great to just be able to just do the electric god wind fist, whatever it's called, uh, repeatedly just by pressing a button. <laughs> it's like oh that's cool it just turns it into like an action game at that point right like a beat em up well then what helped them against me well it probably won't lazy it probably won't I quite like this uh, vindication this kind of Valkyrie Valkyrie looking chick cool stuff cool stuff well, that is uh, gonna wrap it up for tonight. Thank you so much everyone for coming by. I have actually got, um, since I already have my browser open, I got my Twitch open. I'm going to look for some, uh, somebody raid. Thank you, Lazy. It was awesome talking shop with you and John Jones, talking about fighting games. Mainly just checking an MK, but you know. Okay, let's see here. Oops. Oh, right, 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 right. 
Got an F11, the, uh, the window. F11, and then now we go to Twitch. Who do we got? Who do we got? You know what, guys? There's someone who I met, like, over a year ago. And nice guy, Mike Lately. I have not seen him stream for a while, but only very recently I saw him start to stream again. He's playing Resident Evil 4. Let's pay Mike Lately a visit. It's been a while. It's been a long-ass time since I uh, went to a stream and chatted with him. So yeah, let's let's go do that. Let me get that queued up right now. Would be awesome if you guys stuck around for the raid. Mike Lately is a really nice guy. Like I said, haven't seen him for a while. And he's playing Game of the Game of the Moment Resident Evil 4 remake. Yes, the remake. Exactly. Good talk. Have a good night, Mac and everyone. Hey, yeah, thank you, John Jones. I will send you the stuff I was going to send you on Discord. It was just that Henry Cejudo thing. Uh, love you, my dude. Hey, right back at you, Lazy. Thank you so much for your support. Have a great uh, Saturday, Sunday. Everyone else, have a great weekend as well. Ouch, I'll stay with Ray, but bounce, so no spoilers. Ah, okay. If you, if you want to bounce, go right ahead and bounce. Lazy, you don't feel like you need to, uh, you need to be handcuffed to the, uh, to the Twitch, but, uh, let's just head over there. Uh, even if you just want to say hi, Mac attack or Mac one and then jet, that'd be awesome. So, uh, yeah, I will see you all there in about 10 seconds. And, um, don't worry too much about the raid greeting, uh, Mac attack raid or just hello will suffice. Appreciate it, guys. I love you all. Have a good night.